Merry Christmas. <laughs> uh, it is not Christmas yet, but it is pretty close. It could be if you're watching this video. Uh, from all of us at Fishy Business, I'm just gonna jump right in there and say, this is probably gonna be a fairly quick weekly update. There's not enough things that I can say about what every single one of you means to us and has meant to us over 35 years of business from each and every single one of us here. Uh, we are not here without you. Everything that we do, all of this online stuff that we've gotten into, it's because of trying to figure out better ways to serve you guys. Because you've served us so well, I hope that this is some kind of little part of a way to give back to you. Appreciation and thanks. So, uh, Merry, Merry, Merry Christmas, and let's get right into the weekly update. This time on the update, I am gonna go through the store as if it's me going through the store. We're not gonna break it down and chop it up. We're just gonna do this as if you came in the store and I came in the store with you and we're just gonna kinda discover what we've got together. So uh, let's go take a look. Lots of things grace the hallowed halls here at Fishy Business. Uh, but one thing that came in, and I don't know if Guy did this, Richard did this, or Scott did this, but we have a lot of driftwood now. We have a lot of sizes and shapes and some really super cool things. That almost looks like some kind of dinosaur's skull. Very, very cool. Lots of spider wood. Lots of... Uh, Lots of bomb. Photo bomb by Gracie. Lots of cool spider wood. I mean, there are probably a bazillion different cool designs you could do with that particular piece. That almost makes me want to set up a fish tank. This one's fantastic, too. Almost looks like some kind of dinosaur skull too. Really, really cool designs if you've got aquarium for Christmas or you're gonna use your Christmas money to come buy an aquarium. Uh, some of the driftwood we've got right behind. All of these cool resin decorations, I think Richard and Scott spent the most part of their time last week trying to put together and uh, get up here and get priced and stuff. And that I know was an extremely tedious job. So uh, do them a favor and come look at them. Yeah, what he said. Yeah, what he said. Lots of tanks came in. Uh, we got new stands and canopies. We've actually got a couple new styles in development, especially for young children in the boy and girl department. We are coming up with two types of stands and canopies specifically for them. So you're gonna definitely wanna watch this and I'll show them as soon as uh, La Rochelle Designs brings them to us. Let's go look at some of the other things that came. One of the things that's super popular that came right now are discus in fresh water. Cobalts, I don't think we got any of the same color. They're still breathing a little bit hard, but they've only been in the tanks for about an hour, but I want you to see them because, wow, they look pretty phenomenal. And in these new planted tanks that Ryan and Kat set up, uh, they really, really are showing off well. Very, very beautiful there. Oh, I've got to show you this real quick. I showed him last week, but he's on the front. The giant L330 Watermelon Pleco. This is, guy is a beauty. You can see that's my left hand. That's him. So he's a bit of a monster pleco right there. Something I want to show you too. It just got done. Everybody's looking around. Check this out. Excuse us. Yeah, no problem. Just jump right Ryan, in. that's what we do in the video. Ryan did this on the tank tip video for last Saturday, and I'm proud of it. So I want to show it off again. It's one of his designs. If you've ever thought about keeping live plants, but you have thought that it's difficult, hard to do, Ryan put it in easy terms that you can easily achieve this. This is in the bio cube. We spend a lot of time talking about saltwater bio cubes, but we finally sat down and actually did one to yin the yang of the other one. Beautiful, beautiful plant display he did, and you can buy this. Okay, rounding out the corner here, we've got black phantom tetras right here uh, with the really, really high black fins. Uh, love these guys. They are also in with one of my favorite tetras, the red and blue Colombian tetra. When these tetras get big, they get just this electric blue sheen on red fins. They're very inexpensive to be so beautiful, and a school of them in a planted tank is just rock solid. We got in some of the tiny Von Rio tetras. Now these tetras, when they get big, will develop a kind of red center body color that will absolutely pop. And having them this small in a planted aquarium, again, I know I harp on that a lot, but just looks absolutely stunning. Oh, cherry barbs came in. I noticed these when we were walking up a little while ago. Uh, electric red cherry barbs came in. These can be great in a lot of different applications. You can even have kind of a semi-aggressive tank 
and have them in there. Right next to them, we got in some Cribenzas. Uh, these have yet to really color up yet, but if you want a small dwarf cichlid that would go good in a kind of semi-aggressive communal tank, I know that's kind of a play on words. These will do great. I have a group of them in a service account and they are very apt to breed. Uh, they get a lot of beautiful color in them. Moving right along, I got some albino cherry barbs that came in. Pretty stunning fish with the, both the red and the white in there, and you'll see a few albino sharks in there as well. Right next to them, I got in some beautiful rainbow sharks. Uh, I haven't had rainbow sharks in a while, and I don't really know why that is. Might be just simply the part of the world that they come from and everything with COVID. Uh, but I just got a nice group of them in this morning and they pop. Right next to them in the same tank, I have some beautiful Bela sharks you can see that have got a little bit of size on them. Love them. Okay, so in the goldfish department, these beautiful red cap arandas came in this week. Uh, very inexpensive. I love red cap arandas just because of the separation of color and how beautiful they look. If you've got a small goldfish tank, or want to start with goldfish. This is a wonderful goldfish to start with. Right here in salt water, we got in a lot of peppermint shrimp. Uh, Gracie made a really nice display out of this. I mean, I absolutely love the calerpa in here and the shrimp fawning all over it uh, with their castle over here in the form of a big rock. Uh, these are great for eating Aptasia anemones, so you're not going to see them a lot in a tank unless you buy a lot of them, but they are little workers. They keep glass anemones at bay and keep the weeds out of your coral garden. I have uh, pajama cardinals, and I've talked about these in a lot of videos, how this may seem like an incredibly unimpressive fish when you look at it singularly. However, when you put it in a group, I'm telling you, in any size reef tank, they are stunning as a group. There's very few saltwater fish you can truly school in a tank, and this is one you absolutely can, and the more the merrier because they make such an incredible statement. The African Flameback Pygmy Angels. This is a great dwarf pygmy angel fish that can go in a fairly small tank. Looks like we've got a few small orange linkia starfish and a chalk basilet right above it. This is a fish that you can easily miss when you're in here, but the pink and turquoise blue and red, as this fish matures, and it matures probably at about double the size you're looking at right now, is stunning. It's a very peaceful fish for a reef tank. You can put multiple uh, chalk basslets basslet together, uh, and it is just, it is a simple, unobtrusive, but beautiful saltwater fish. It's very rare that a Monday is actually a great saltwater day, but today it absolutely was. If you look in here, you can see the queen angelfish and a couple red goatfish, one actually peering out of the rock wall behind it. The Melanurus wrasse, probably one of my favorite fish in all of saltwater. I think this is a female. I can't, it's, it really doesn't have a highlighted blue color yet. Maybe it is a male um, and just hasn't pop the color yet, but probably one of my favorite reef fish. We got yellow tangs in this week. Not a lot. As I stated in last week's video, these are getting incredibly hard to get because of Hawaii cutting off the supply. I think I have maybe one or two yellow tangs in here, and that's as of today. All the ones I showed in the video last week sold out in about two days. So if you're in the market for a yellow tang, get them before, just like you saw, he's gone. <laughs> really cool. Uh, female wiretail anthias. These are great for a reef tank, especially if you've got lots of nooks and crannies. Uh, I just took uh, five of them out to a service account today to actually play around a pirate ship that I designed into their reef, and it's pretty stunning. I don't now. This is a, ma a male uh, Melanurus wrasse that came in today. Beautiful fish there. Uh, moving right along, I got in a squareback anthias. Probably one of the hardiest antheus that you can ever put in a tank. This is a fish that stays out. It stays mid-water right up close to where you can see it all the time. Will usually adapt to brine shrimp and almost any type of food. Fantastic fish. Okay, so thanks for paying attention to the video. Merry Christmas again, everyone. Uh, thank you for everything that you guys mean to us. No joke. Uh, from the heart. We would not do this if there was no you to do it for. So come see us. There's a lot going on. God bless. Merry Christmas. Stay safe. Happy holidays. And we'll see you back with a little bit more normal video next week.